All right, my people, I've got a big one today, and I don't know, there it is, I don't know, um, you guys are going to call me crazy, you're going to say it's a conspiracy theory, you're going to say, hey, this is going nowhere, and you know what, you might be right, but you, uh, I, I kind of started down this rabbit hole, first of all, just for documentation purposes, it's September 5th, 2022, um, and my rabbit hole that I've managed to take myself down today and for a while really is for if you guys have followed me on Facebook um, or you're my friends uh, in real life you know like the earthquakes that used to happen in California were almost predictable um, about 2017 18 19 like it was pretty predictable we were doing a bunch of traveling at the time in a van and like it, it, you could see by the media cycles you could see by the um, you follow Dutch Sense on, well, used to be YouTube, now they banned him. And it was pretty accurate, like, uh, even down to the size of the earthquake. This is going to be a lengthy video. I'll get to my point here pretty soon, but I got to give you the backstory on how I got down this rabbit hole. So, um, it used to be pretty accurate. I mean, within almost hours, you could figure out when an earthquake was going to hit, where it was going to hit. And then, uh, all of a sudden, you heard that harp was shut down and i don't know if this is factual I, I i don't study harp i don't want to say that i know anything about harp but it's just ironic that i, I believe i remember hearing something that harp was shut down for a, a couple of years and during covid magically earthquakes disappeared like during covid you don't remember hearing anything about california earthquakes i mean for that sake you don't really remember hearing anything about kind of earthquakes in general anywhere like it was it was very rare to have a good size earthquake where we used to have the fives, the sixes, um, even the fours. I mean, those are nothing to scoff at. So, but during COVID magically earthquakes disappeared. I mean, along with a lot of other things. So I don't know where you stand with COVID, but you know where I'm going with that. Like you figure your part out. So, um, it brought me down this rabbit hole the last couple of days of the, uh, dam up at Mead, Hoover Dam, and the water levels lowering so dramatically in the last year and a half, two years, it kind of reminded me when we were traveling across California and we would stop in some of these towns and they would give you bottled water because they had no water. Um, they had a huge drought through there and it was just very weird. You know, it was almost propaganda like it was just, um, you know, like, hey, we're running out of water. And it seemed like a great thing for the media to pick up on and say, hey, this is climate change. Because everything now, since COVID's gone, is going to be man-made climate change. I don't know where you stand on that. I don't really care. Um, you can probably clearly see where I stand on it. So <laughs> let's go. So it was weird traveling, getting bottled water, not being able to eat at a restaurant and get just, hey, give me a soda or give me something. It was just Everywhere we stopped was, we had bottled water and it was emergency palletized in and the county or the city that you were at provided it. It was very odd. So it made me start to look at earthquake trends. And one of the big earthquake trends that I remember hearing about was dams, water levels, and how that affects um, the plates and causes earthquakes. So... I don't know if you heard about it, but um, Oroville Lake, what was it? Pro we were traveling then to probably, oh gosh, three, four years ago, maybe, um, had record high. They had that spillway issue. But prior to that, in 1975, they had the lowest water, water record, the lowest water level on record, which scientists, scientists, um, said that it created a 5.7 earthquake in that area because of the volume of water being reduced um, in that drought period. So it kind of made me think, well, if they determined an odd 5.7 earthquake came from a reduced water level in Oroville, then we go over to China. Well, China has the biggest dam, I think, in the world. Um, I would butcher it and I wrote it down. So I guess I'll look at it so I can actually sound like I know what I'm talking about, which some of you guys are going to say I'm crazy and I don't know what I'm talking about anyways. You might be right. I don't know. So let's see. 
hang on, bear with me, uh, Z-I-P-I-N-G-P-O-DAM. Um, and that, when that uh, dam was created in China, it created massive, massive earthquakes. And it, it held the most volume of water behind it. So they determined that reservoirs can trigger quakes by adding weight to the Earth's crust. That is on NASA and the USGS websites. Like they're, they're publicly saying that that is the case. Well, so we had an earthquake at Oroville, 5.7 based on low water volume. We had 8.0s in China based on high water volume. So then you follow me down this rabbit hole. Let's go down this rabbit hole. Here we go. Well, I'm in Lake Havasu, which is on the Colorado River, which is, I don't know, 150 miles, 100 miles from Hoover Dam. That good feeling of like, hey, Hoover Dam, something could happen. And, you know, at least I'm up on a hill, I guess. But it kind of sends me down this rabbit hole of the lake mead issue that everybody's talking about right now. So we have seen just gross, gross negligence and just the, the water departments, the energy departments that handle the dams and reservoirs in the Colorado River system between uh, Central Arizona Project, Metropolitan Water, like the people that run those, absolute buffoons. And they might look at my video and say, hey, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. But I think everybody can agree that what's going on is just crazy. Like the amount of water that got sent out, the amount of water that wasn't retained, the amount of water that's running down into the ocean in Mexico. So, well, we'll that's not what this video is about. So backtrack to my rabbit hole and I go, man, mead sure is low and it's getting lower all the time. Well, so then it starts me down this rabbit hole of wonder if there's any seismic areas that are uh, maybe near Mead. And I think, I can't find it exactly, but I think there is a major fault line. They said that Western Nevada has the most active faults of anywhere in Nevada. And they have the highest earthquakes uh, in the state in that same area. So the Lake Mead fault system, it is called the Mead Slope fault. So I have yet to tell if that actually runs uh, by where the Hoover Dam is. And I know the Hoover Dam was built. Like if you look at uh, a lot of, uh, if you Google search anything, you'll see that they apparently made the Hoover Dam to withstand an 8.0 earthquake. Um, so they say, I mean, the Twin Towers were built to, you know, withstand airplanes, but we all know how that propaganda went down. So, um, <laughs> So it kind of brings you down this rabbit hole of meat is lowering at a rate that we've never seen. If it keeps getting lower, the scientists at NASA, USGS, and all these places have kind of agreed that water level and the weight of water and the difference can cause major earthquakes. So this is my rabbit hole of what a perfect storm. So here we have a huge drought in the Western United States. We have a drought that it affects 25 million people. That's how many people get water from Lake Mead. Um, and the Hoover Dam is obviously like a battery um, for if the power grid were to go down, they would have water to pump, which would create power. So twofold bad by this happening. Um, so it, I'm going to sit down because I'm tired of walking around. So it kind of it kind of makes you wonder what is this, I don't believe in coincidences. Like it's just when you get people involved and there's money involved, which we all know that water, um, uh, municipalities, any of these, any of these companies that are involved, if there's money involved, there's something shady happening. That's just, we know that from the world. So if you think about history repeating itself, we've seen it at Oroville. We've seen it in China, and we have yet to see anything in Nevada with the Hoover Dam, other than the news that the water level is lowering. So what a perfect storm right now to have something happen, like an earthquake, in that area that disrupts the water flow 
for California, Nevada, basically the lower basins. So that's what they call the lower basin. You have upper basin, which the snowpack feeds the, the reservoir. Lower basin uses the water. So wouldn't that just be a perfect storm to push their new climate change agenda? You know, that man-made climate change. Like if they could basically make something happen that was almost forced, they would benefit so greatly from it because it would be a worldwide thing that everybody would follow and everybody would know, oh, it's because man-made, you know, people use too much water. There's too, there's too much climate change going on. Like it's just one of those deals. Like maybe I'm completely wrong here, but it, there's just too much. There, there's, there's too much at stake for them to not benefit from this, if that makes sense. So that's kind of my rabbit hole that I've been down. I hope nothing happens. Maybe it'll just be a simple drought and they just stick it to us that way and say, hey, we don't have enough water. But um, if they are creating, oh, and by the way, I heard that harp got turned on probably about three or four months ago. And it's ironic how you've seen the flooding in Kentucky and you've seen just massive, massive amounts of flooding basically everywhere. And like events are starting back up. So I'll circle back to that whole thing when I, from the beginning of the video saying that they shut down harp for a while and you didn't see anything during COVID. Well, they fired harp back up and here all of a sudden we have all these crazy weather events. So take from that what you will, but it almost looks like a manufacturing process here of creating a drought. And this is my rabbit hole. This is my conspiracy theory. This is my, if you will, where is it? This is my false flag that they are going to try to manufacture something that creates an earthquake that creates disruption with the dam that creates a disruption with 25 million people getting water all over the Western United States from this dam and they will use it as propaganda, as man-made climate change that will basically affect everybody in the United States to fall into that system that they want, that green new agenda that they're pushing for. And keep in mind, California is the fifth largest economy in the world. So typically what California does, everybody seems to follow suit. So California, we've already heard them talk ridiculous talks about getting rid of gasoline vehicles by 2035. So if they can have a huge event that's water related, that affects millions and millions of people um, in Southern California, you better believe that they are going to strictly enact anything to regulate and control you based on that event. So kind of interesting thoughts. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it never happens, but if you, I, I urge you to look up the Orville Dam earthquake, look up the gigantic, I think, like I said, the world's biggest dam in China and the earthquakes that happened from that. Um, do a little research on USGS, all those other sites that um, kind of show you uh, that they're saying that the weight of the water on the crust is causing um, tectonic events. So do your research. Um, leave it in the comments. I, I don't mind if you guys call me crazy. Hey, I do a lot of this stuff like... I'll sit there at night and just kind of think and put two and two together. And sometimes it equals four, sometimes it equals five. Maybe this one equals four and a half and it doesn't happen. I don't know. Like I, it's just out there now. And I took a bunch of screenshots and I have a bunch of documentation because we know the internet tends to um, edit itself, itself, um, when events change to favor the events. So I've done my research and I've taken tons of screenshots from NASA information, which take it what you will, uh, USGS information as well. And um, I have it all saved that way in case history tries to rewrite itself. At least I have the original documents before they were edited. So um, stay safe out there, but don't ever change your safety for uh, freedoms because that's what they want. And uh, just kind of start looking at looking at history and how it might repeat itself. And then always look at who could benefit from these man-made natural disasters. So, all right, YouTube, um, this is the crazy guy <laughs> signing off. Um, take care. Like I said, leave me comments if you want. I'm totally up for it. Um, hopefully this thing doesn't get deleted because 
you know, they, you know how it goes. So goodbye, YouTube.